Today's Bible reading for July 11th. We're reading from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, and the Proverbs. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Chronicles chapter 11, verse 1 to chapter 12, verse 18. Then all Israel gathered before David at Hebron and told him, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even when Saul was king, you were not the you were the one who really led the forces of Israel. And the Lord your God told you, You will be the shepherd of my people Israel. You will be the leader of my people Israel. So there at Hebron, David made a covenant before the Lord with all the elders of Israel, and they anointed him king of Israel, just as the Lord had promised through Samuel. Then David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, or Jebus as it used to be called, where the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land, were living. The people of Jebus taunted David, saying, You'll never get in here. But David captured the fortress of Zion, which is now called the city of David. David had said to his troops, whoever is first to attack the Jebusites will become the commander of my armies. And Joab, the son of David's sister Zeruiah, was first to attack, so he became the commander of David's armies. David made the fortress his home, and that is why it is called the city of David. He extended the city from the supporting terraces to the surrounding area, while Joab rebuilt the rest of Jerusalem. And David became more and more powerful because the Lord of Heaven's armies was with him. These are the leaders of David's mighty warriors. Together with all Israel, they decided to make David their king, just as the Lord had promised concerning Israel. Here is the record of David's mightiest warriors. The first was Jashubim, the Hakmonite, who was leader of the three, the mightiest warriors among David's men. He used he once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three was Eleazar, son of Dodai, a descendant of Ahua. He was with David when the Philistines gathered for battle at Pass Damin and attacked the Israelites in a field full of barley. The Israelite army fled, but Eleazar and David held their ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines, so the Lord saved them by giving them a great victory. Once, when David was at the rock near the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But David refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. God forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risked their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. Abishai, the brother of Joab, was leader of the thirty. He once used his spear to kill three hundred enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. 
Abishai was the most famous of the thirty and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabzil. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two champions of Moab. Another time, on a snowy day, he chased a lion down into a pit and killed it. Once, armed with a club, he killed an Egyptian warrior who was seven and a half feet tall and who was armed with a spear as thick as a weaver's beam. Benaiah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. Deeds like this made Benaiah as famous as the three mightiest warriors. He was more honored than the other members of the thirty, though he was not one of the three, and David made him captain of his bodyguard. David's mighty warriors also included Asahel, Joab's brother, Elhanan, son of Dudu, from Bethlehem, Shammah, from Harod, Helis, from Pelon, Ira, son of Ikesh, from Tekoa, Abiezer, from Anathoth, Sibekai, from Husha, Zalmon, from Ahua, Meharai from Netopha, Helet, son of Baana from Netopha, Itai, son of Rebai from Gibeah in the land of Benjamin, Benaiah from Pirathon, Hurai from Nea Nahil Gash, Abialbon from Araba, Asmaveth from Bahurim, Eliaba from Shal. Bon, the sons of Jashin from Gizon, Jonathan, son of Shagi from Harar, Ahiam, son of Shara from Harar, Elipha, son of Ur, Hepha from Mekira, Ahijah from Pilon, Hezro from Carmel, Parai, son of Ezbai, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibara, son of Hagri, Zelek from Ammon, Naharai from Biroth, <coughs> the armor bearer of Job, son of Zeruiah, Ira from Jatir, Garib from Jatir, Uriah the Hittite, Zabad, son of Alai, Adina, son of Shiza, the Rubenite leader who who had thirty men with him, Hanan, son of Maaka, Joshaphat from Mithna, Uziah from Ashtaroth, Shama and Jael, the sons of Hotham from Aroa, Jediel, son of Shimri, Joha, his brother from Tiz, Eliel from Mahava, Jeribai and Joshaviah, the sons of Elna, Ithma from Moab, Eliel and Obed, Jaseel from Zoba. The following men joined David at Ziklag while he was hiding from Saul, son of Kish. They were among the warriors who fought beside David in battle. All of them were expert archers and they could shoot arrows or sling stones with their left hand as well as their right. They were all relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. Their leader was Ahazer, son of Shema from Gibeah. His brother Joash was second in command. These were the other warriors. Jeziel and Pelet, son of Asmaveth, Beraka, Jehu from Anathoth, Ishmael from Gibeon, a famous warrior and leader among the thirty, Jeremiah, Jahaziel, Johanna, and Josabad from Gedera, Eluzai, Jerimoth, Bealia, Shemaria, and Shephatiah from Haruf, 
Akina Ishiai Ishi A Azare Joeze and Jashubim who were Korahites Juela and Zebediah sons of Jeroham from Gidon. Some brave and experienced warriors from the tribe of God also defected to David while he was at the stronghold in the wilderness. They were experts with both shield and spear, as fierce as lions and as swift as deer on the mountains. Ezer was their leader, Obadiah was second, Eliab was third, Mishmana was fourth, Jeremiah was fifth, Atai was sixth, Eliel was seventh, Johanan was eighth, Elzabad was ninth, Jeremiah was tenth, Makbanai was eleventh. These warriors from Gad were army commanders. The weakest among them could take on a hundred regular troops, and the strongest could take on a thousand. These were the men who crossed the Jordan River during its seasonal flooding at the beginning of the year and drove out all the people living in the lowlands on both the east and west banks. Others from Benjamin and Judah came to David at the stronghold. David went out to meet them and said, If you have come in peace to help me, we are friends. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies when I am innocent, then may the God of our ancestors see it and punish you. Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, the leader of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David. We are on your side, son of Jesse. Peace and prosperity be with you, and success to all who help you, for your God is the one who helps you. So David let them join him, and he made them officers over his troops. So that's the reading from the Old Testament. The reading from the New Testament is from Acts chapter 28. Once we were safe on shore, we learned that there were on the we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided.